I mean, that's the other little interesting part that this was never scrapped in two scrap drives, you know? Uh, that's, that's fascinating that someone knew what this was because um, a lot of money in scrap during World War I or World War II. So. Hi, Jason Van Sickle here uh, giving IMS Museum social media fans a sneak peek inside some of the cars here at our From the Vault exhibit presented by Bank of America. The first one that we're going to talk about is Carl Fisher's 1905 premiere. And this is a stunning, beastly car that we have here. Uh, Carl Fisher obviously built the Indianapolis Motor Speedway along with three other founders in 1909. But this car predates the building of the track. Uh, in Fisher's early days, he was a little bit of a uh, jack of all trades. He was a salesman, he was a showman, and at one part of his life, he was an amateur race car driver, barnstormer. Um, how this car came about was Fisher was uh, invited, uh, went overseas to the Gordon Bennett Cup. He was appalled by how the American cars did in that race. Uh, it was a long distance road race, uh, pitting different countries' uh, automobiles against each other. Fisher was quoted as saying that the American cars could not go down the hills quicker than the European cars could go up the hills. So after the race, he flew back to Indianapolis, met with a local businessman who made automobiles, George Widely, with the premier motor manufacturing company out of Indianapolis. And he pretty much told him, build me the biggest, baddest race car you can, and we'll show him. So this was their, their creation. It's a 923 cubic, cubic inch hemispherical single overhead cam four cylinder that happens to be air cooled also widely was a huge proponent of air cooled engines uh, it's an exposed crank um, cars of this era were racing on gravel or dirt tracks long distance established roads so they didn't really have to worry about the fact that the car was leaking oil like we have today one tidbit with that is obviously the oil would spray on both the driver and the riding mechanic um, the bodywork, this was pretty common for race cars in the early days of, the, uh, of auto racing, where uh, exposed race cars were, were somewhat of the norm. So Fisher commissioned George Wiley to build this premier race car for the 1905 Vanderbilt Cup held on Long Island, the road race that pitted different nations' automobiles against each other. But each nation was limited to a certain amount of cars. So there were elimination races for each uh, country before the, the main big race. Um, Unfortunately, the premier race car was too heavy uh, for the elimination race. At the time, they had a max weight. And you would think now, because race cars are built with lightness in mind, that a heavy car would be a, a detriment to the race car itself. What they actually did was it would limit the engine size because the engine was the majority of the, the weight of these early race cars. So Widely and Fisher's idea first was to change the chain drive from a live rear axle, which this car originally had. Uh, that saved some weight, but they were still heavy. So then they started to drill all the holes that you see throughout here to help um, shave weight. The car was still about 300 pounds too heavy and could not make the elimination race. The car itself did have some racing action in October of 1905, where Fisher ran a five lap handicap race against two other automobiles. Um, Quite the promoter and barnstormer, Fisher knew the amount of uh, head start he would give the other competitors to pass them on the final lap. Uh, this race was held at our State Fair dirt track, just a few miles away from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway today, at night, lit by presto light containers. So it was very, very, uh, very dimly lit in today's terms. And Fisher uh, would be considered today legally blind. He had two real bag of stigmatisms in his eye and then would not get his first pair of glasses until later in his career. Uh, Fisher averaged in this car on the dirt, 57 miles an hour, over 57 miles an hour, uh, winning that five mile handicap race. The car was also believed not to race again, uh, but it did run again at the state fairgrounds with the driver Alonzo Webb in a, a secondary race later on. So what we're gonna do now is look inside what Fisher or Alonzo Webb had to, had to control uh, driving this, this Premier here. So obviously you have a, it's a two seat race car which was common at the time because you had to have a riding mechanic. The riding mechanic usually would monitor oil pressure. He would actually pump the 
pressure into the fuel tank, which is this pump here. So you'd have a hand pump that pumped the pressure into the fuel tank that's behind the two driver and riding mechanic. Uh, they would also act as a spotter also. Fisher, on the other hand, would have his hands full. Um, obviously, uh, you have two of these little uh, levers here. Uh, this lever here controls the spark advance. So it would move the magneto on the back of the camshaft there, and you could advance or retard your spark. Uh, this lever right here is your throttle. So what it would do is it would open and close the Schebler carburetor that this car has, um, obviously allowing more air to go into the car and, and speed up. Here's your shifter here. Um, you have a sequential shifter. You have your chain drive right next to the driver's uh, arm. Uh, then you have the clutch, which is here, and then you have a clutch brake, which uh, slowed the, the car down. Um, the car didn't have brakes itself, but, but it was a friction device that ran on the clutch and slowed the car down, uh, acting like what we know brakes is today. Uh, dating back to the late 50s, this is one of the oldest cars in the IMS Museum collection. 